This is our Super Bowl.
I'll say this again. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Amen. 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 
Amen. And one thing about I found out about a king, he wants to rule. Yes. Don't miss that. He yes. wants to rule. Yes. And I'm not talking about over a place. No. I'm talking about you. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 Yeah. Yeah. That's the domain. That's the, the, the domain he wants to rule over. That's right. You. That's right. But the truth of it is, he only is going to rule over you if you are allow him to. Amen. They used to say, we talked about it yesterday in men's meeting, that uh, the Holy Spirit is a perfect gentleman. He is not wrestling us down. He is not putting us in a headlock, talking about something you're going to do what I tell you to do. He's just going to be there when you need him. Amen. He is the promise. And we allow, he's allowed to live inside of us. It's a rule over us. Amen? Amen. If we allow him to. Amen? Amen? So, we have a king. He has a kingdom. And you are his domains. And he wants to rule over you. Amen? Amen. And we thank God for him ruling over us. Amen. Let's get out of the way. We're going to receive the word of God. We're going to receive our pastor. Amen? Amen. Let's receive him. Amen? Amen. It is uh, good to be in the house of the Lord uh, together uh, on this Lord's Day, this special day where The community of, of, of Christendom understands that it's resurrection morning. And the rest of the world are in search of boiled eggs. <laughs> and chasing rabbits. Of chocolate and marshmallow and whatever. And... Uh, I'm not hating on them. I'm not mad at them. But it's good to know what it's all about. It's good to know what it is all about. And, um, oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you. And so we, um, we celebrate him on this resurrection morning. You have your Bibles or your device, whatever, whatever it is you have. Let's go to the Word of God. I promise um, that I won't be too long. I'm, I'm going to. Do, I'm only going to be here until I finish, and then, <laughs> uh, and then I'll let you go to Easter brunch or lunch. It might be late for brunch. No, no, you're gonna make it. You have a reservation. You're ready to make it. Um, in Jesus' name, we're gonna make it. Amen. Uh, Acts chapter three. Acts chapter three. Not necessarily a resurrection uh, message. This morning, but um, I believe though, that all messages really are about. They really are. If 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 we believe in the Christocentric, Christo Christ centric center, if we believe in the Christocentric principle as it relates to the Word, that all of the Word, that Christ Jesus is the center of the Word. He is even in the books of the Bible that don't even mention Him. Amen. Right? Right. Amen. Don't even mention him, but 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 in picture, in, in analogy, um, you know, he he is there. He is there in the book of Ruth when it talks about um, her kinsman right. redeemer. Right. That's, right. Right. Hey. That's, That's Jesus. Amen. My kinsman redeemer. My elder brother. My, right. my older brother. Yeah. Anybody got an older sibling? Yeah. Well, you know, they just pick on you and mess with you. Yeah. Yeah. You want them to do some stuff for you. Easy, easy, Sean. Easy, Sean. Easy, yeah. Easy. Yeah. 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 We, we want lunch to be nice later. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's tough to get an older sibling to treat you with respect. And you want to follow your older sibling around and they tell you, go home. Stop following me. Go home. I ain't, I ain't had no older sibling that I was, you know, Marshall's my older sibling. I wasn't following Marshall. And actually, I loved Marshall, but we didn't have the same circles and do the same things. 
Now, I wasn't following her. And so, you say amen to that. Some folks, you ain't supposed to be following no how. Whatever. You, you know, and that ain't about Marcia. That's about you. Yeah, on this resurrection morning. Here we go. Here we go. And, and, and but my, my kinsman, Redeemer, my older brother, he did for me what nobody else would do for me. Look, somebody told him, say, ain't, no, ain't nothing like family. Ain't nothing like family. My other brother did for me what nobody else could do for me. He did for me what I couldn't do for myself. He did for me what no one else would do for me. He died in my place. I'm so glad for my, my big brother. Ooh, I'm so glad for my big brother. Amen. And then, and then in the economy of the, of the kingdom, in the economy of the kingdom, what God will do is he will give you, he will give you people. Yeah. Flesh and blood people. I, I got some brothers in this room will do anything for me. Amen. Not because I'm their pastor, but because I'm their brother. Right. Right. Amen. Well, you got to get that. Yeah. 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 Come on, sis. You, you got some women in this place will do anything for you. Not because yes, you're their know. elder in the Lord, yeah. but because you're their sister. Yes, Y'all up there? I didn't know there. Give me a chance. Give me a chance. And so I'm grateful for, for him. And while 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 on the surface this may not be um, necessarily a, a resurrection a sermon, a a a, a, um, a Easter morning uh, sermon, all sermons are. Yes, sir. Amen. All of them. What well, Pastor Jake preached last week. Right. That was, that was a resurrection. Yes, sir. Who are you looking for? I know that. Right. Y'all yeah, remember that man, that country western song? Said he was looking for love. Oh. Oh, oh, my God. Looking for love. And, Too many places. Oh, yeah. He's oh, just really? looking for love, looking for love, looking for love. And, and, and you know, sometimes you can be so busy looking for it until you can't you can't see it because it's right. And it's hard to find what you don't know about. Right? If you, you don't you don't know what you're looking for, then you'll just settle for any old day. Yeah, you'll say, man, but I'm preaching so good. I mean, we gotta go. I got a daughter back there. I know she got me on the clock, but I don't care. We'll be late for our adventure. Okay, okay, Acts, Acts chapter 11. I, I want to read the text, but but I think, but I believe that that um, after I read the text, I want to I want to I want to visit the pretext just for a moment because I believe there's some things in the pretext that that we need to capture. And if we capture some of those things in the pretext, it better helps us to understand the text. Yeah. Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah. okay. Now, now, I will make this statement right off the guff. This should be a three-part sermon. This should be a series, right? This should be a series. And I keep telling y'all, when you go to the Word of God, when you, you, are, you are responsible for preaching and teaching, almost every text you land on should yeah. be a series. A series. Because there's the pretext. There's the text and the post text. That's three messages right there. All right. Yeah. You, you listen. As we as we as we approach the Word of God, let's just shift a little bit in our thinking. Let's just shift a little bit in our thinking. It's, listen. I'm looking at some of y'all, and some of y'all are just going, well, I got to preach, you know, you know, they ask me to speak on something, you know, and I'm just having such a struggle, and, and I don't know why you're having a struggle. The Bible's just so full of stuff. Amen. Good Amen. stuff for your soul, Amen. for your betterment, for your life, for your family. Okay. Getting a word is not the struggle. Right. Getting me out of the way. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. That's the struggle. And so for all the preachers, all the teachers in the room, that's the struggle. It's not with the text. It's not with God. It's with me. Right. Right. Listen, if you 
you're responsible for sharing the word in a public forum, put your hand on you and say, I'm the problem. No, oh, you got to be bold, you got to be brash, you got to be honest and say, I'm the problem. Here's the problem. Either you think too much of you or you think too little of you. But that's a problem. Both are pride. Both are pride. Both are pride. Both are birthed out of an over-exaggerated sense of self. Either you think too little of you or you think too big of you. But I'm the problem. But the word answers the problem. Greater is he. And either I can do all things or I can't. There is no sometimingness in God. No. You, you, you tracking? Yeah. Amen. Acts chapter 3. Uh, Y'all know this story, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, um, uh, Acts chapter 3. I, I want to start at verse number 11. I'm almost ready to tell you what I'm ready to tell you. All right. But I ain't going to tell you yet. Acts chapter 3, verse number 11. I am reading from here. Oh, hear it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless it. Okay, you ready? Let's read together. Let's just follow me, follow me. Now, this is New King James. Now, as the lame man who was healed. So this is after his healing. Y'all know the lame man we're talking about. He was sat outside the, the gate going into the temple. He was lame. He was he was lame. In, in the Greek, the word lame here, it, it means from his waist down. So he was paraplegic. He was paraplegic. Right? You, you know, right. sometimes the paraplegic thinks they're better than the quadriplegic. Right. Now, I ain't talking about people who have a, a physical infirmity now either. Right. Some of us think because you have that problem, but I have this problem, I'm in a better situation than you. You quadriplegic, I'm only para. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Help us. You still here? Yes. When you need help, you need help. Right. Whether you can use four of your limbs or just two. You still need help. All of us are in the helpline. Ain't none of us better off. Now as a lame man, who was healed, held on to Peter and John. This is so bad. Pulpit etiquette. This is horrible pulpit etiquette because I keep interrupting the text, but I can do that. Okay? This is true. Listen, when you get what you want from God, don't flee the scene. Hold on. Hold on. God, there, God has a multiplicity of blessings that he wants to pour out on you. You get one and you run. You, you come with a problem and God meets that need to you jet. Right? And if you are not careful, you fall back into the same situation. Why? Because you didn't hold on. You, you got to hold on. See, see, you know, Dr. James wrote a book one time. He said, can you stand to be blessed? Some of us, we get a blessing and we lose our mind. Come on. It's a blessing, praise God. But there's more. There's more. So, so uh, he was healed. He held on to Peter and John. All the people ran together to them in the porch, which is called Solomon's. And they ran there. They were greatly amazed. Everybody knew this guy. They were greatly amazed. So when Peter saw it, he responded to the people. Peter was, was he, Peter, Peter was, you know, this was post Holy Ghost. All right. Come on. Come on. Y'all got to go with me. And, and so there was a sensitivity now that Peter had. Peter was astute now to the things that were going on around him. There was a season where Peter was just astute to what was going on in him. Now he was paying attention to what was going on around him. Right? Listen, this, this is what we call spirit. 
spiritual maturity when you are sensitive to what's going on around you and not just what's going on in you. So when Peter saw it, he, he saw it. He saw the crowd gathering. He saw their interest. He saw their excitement. And Peter thought, this is the time to preach the gospel. Uh -huh. This is the time to preach. This is the time to share the message of Jesus. Uh -huh. You know that there is a time. The Bible says, Solomon, the proverbial writer, says there's a time for everything. Uh -huh. There's a time for everything. Uh -huh. And listen, don't just come and you're satisfied with the time you came for. Uh -huh. You need to sit through the next period. Uh -huh. Because God's got something for you in that as well. Yes, sir. He responded to the people, men of Israel. He began to preach the gospel. He began to preach the gospel. He preached the core of the gospel. He preached the content of the gospel. And he preached the conduct of the gospel. See, that's why this should be a series. Because I don't have time to, to I don't have time to do that, to go into that. But that's a big thing. You gotta preach the whole thing. You have to. You say, well, I'm not a scholar, I'm not a theologian. Let me, let me give you a, let me give you the short version. You want to minister to somebody, you want to share with somebody, you want to share the gospel with somebody. Tell them about your life before you met Jesus. Amen. And be honest. Look somebody say, be honest. Be honest. Be honest, man. you were a wreck. Be honest. Yeah. Be honest. Oh, you were dressed up, but you were a wreck. Yeah. You went to Macy's and bought cologne and perfume. You smelled good, yeah. but you were a good smelling wreck. That's right. Yeah. Be honest. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Tell them about your life before Jesus. Yeah. Then tell them how you came to meet Jesus. Come on. <laughs> My mom said, I know a man right. from Galilee. I don't know what wrong she met him on, but when you meet him, he'll turn your life around. Are you okay? Man, we gotta go. I can't, I can't even, y'all know the rest of that. I can't, I can't, I can't. He said, men of Israel, why do you marvel like this? Or why look so intently at us? Don't look at me. Don't look at Peter. Don't look at John. We didn't do it. Don't look at Pastor Bill. I didn't do it. Ain't no power in me. God, I can't heal anybody. God, I pray a prayer of faith, but God is a healer. I can't deliver anybody. God is a deliverer. Stop building yourself as somebody who can get it done. Why do you marvel at this? Or why look so intently at us as though by our own power or godliness? We have made this man whole. Now don't forget in St. John chapter number 1 verse number 12, the Bible said that, that as many as received them, to them gave he. He oh, I have some power, but I know the limits of the power I have. I can't heal you. I can't deliver you. I can't magically put money in you. Well, no, that's not magic. I can physically put money in your pocket. It ain't magic. That's my money I'm putting in your it ain't magic. It ain't magic. Are you okay? Amen. Look at somebody here saying, we gotta go, we gotta go. <laughs> the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he is a generational God. Yes, yes. Aren't you glad? So Aren't you glad? So glad? That's why we have family. Yep. And then he's a generational God. The God of our fathers glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let Pilate was going to let Jesus go. Y'all don't know the story. Pilate said, I find no fault. He said it. He said, I find no fault in this dude here. This, this dude, all right. I, 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 don't, I don't even know what y'all talking about. I don't know what y'all talking about. And then, listen, look, I won't even tell you. Then, but you denied the Holy One and the Just. He is holy. And he is just, and you denied him. Every time I go and be willful in the face of God, I deny the Holy One and the Just One. Every time I go and do what he said, don't do, I deny him. Unless we want to cast the Jews in a disparaging light here. No, you do it too. 
I do it as well. Are you okay? You said, and you not only did you deny him, but you asked for a murderer. You asked for you. Barabbas was a convicted murderer. You asked for a murderer over a savior. I want to enter, I want to stop and I want to pray, Lord, heal my twisted mind. Yeah. Now I know you're praying for me, but you need to put your hand on you. Here is the savior of the world, and you ask for a murderer over him. God gives him to you. And kill the prince of life, whom God, listen, whom God what? Raised, Raised from the dead. Of which, yeah. oh Lord, this is just the text. Help us, Jesus. <laughs> and his name, through faith in his name. And his name. Yes, sir. Through faith in his name. I believe Paul picks it up and says to the church at Philippi, Wherefore God hath highly exalted him and given him a name, which is above every name that at the name. Jesus. Say it again. Jesus. At the name Jesus. That's my subject. Faith in his name. And, 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 and we're almost done. I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't go any further. What's here? What's time we got? Where's Mia? What time we got to be? To, don't, don't tell me. Don't tell me. Okay, Mia, Mia is back there giving me the evil eye. I might need to escort. You won't. Listen. Listen. Thank you, Mama. But that girl's tough, Mama. Lord. Just, just quickly, okay. We're gonna, we're gonna look, we're gonna peek into the pretext, and then we're gonna go. I promise. We have, I can't get back to the text, and I certainly can't get to the post text. We just don't have time. We're just gonna peek into the pretext. The critical thing I want you to understand. I want you to see up close the demeanor of Peter and John, and then see the demeanor of the man who was in need. Now, you cannot be in need and be nonchalant about your need. Amen. Stop expecting me to take your need more seriously than you take it. Uh, 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 Dr. Payton, can we go to verse number four? Listen to this now. Verse number four, same chapter, pretext now. And fixing his eyes on him, with John, Peter said, first of all, there was something in the look. There was something in the look. Yeah. My mom and dad, when they raised us, and you know, it be, be right, man, and, you know, my mom also, she, she knows when we were teenage, mm, she misremembered, I was real, I was. My mom was my teacher in Sunday school in the car class. We didn't have Sunday school books. We didn't know how to read. We were that little. We, I mean, I'm like pre, preschool. She was my Sunday school teacher. And, and, and. And she will just prop you up on every leaning side. Yes, and, and that's just the way it went. So all I want to say about that, I believe the Lord has forgiven her. I believe it. I, believe it. I, believe it. I deserve everything I got. And then some. I got away with some too. But I believe the Lord has forgiven her. Listen, there is something, there is something about there is something about the gaze. There is something about looking. There is something about seeing. Uh, Peter and John, they looked directly at him. Mom and dad said, when you're talking to somebody, you don't look down. You don't look away. You look them in their eye. There isn't anything deficient about you that you have to turn your gaze. And there shouldn't be anything deficient in them where you can't make eye contact. Listen, in this age, people of God, if we are going to be a blessing to people, you're going to have to connect to people.
Yeah, and then when you feel my gaze, don't you look away either. Amen. You better give it back. Are you here? Amen. I believe, listen to me now, listen. I believe the God you see is the God you get. Oh, yes. Amen. Let me say it again. I believe the God you see is the God you get. If you see a weak, inferior, can't get it done kind of God, then the poet used to say, he'll be to you just what you'll have. If you want a weak God, Pastor Jay already told you, the Holy Spirit, he's a gentleman, he ain't going to force nothing on you. He ain't going to twist your arm. He ain't going to put you in a full Nelson, a half Nelson. He ain't going to put you in a hammerlock. He ain't going to give you the Jimmy Snoop uh, uh, suplex. None of that. If you don't want him, it's okay. It's okay. I believe the God you see is the God you get. Can I prove text it? Can we, can we? Genesis chapter 22. Hurry up. No, we got to go. We got to go. We got to go. I, 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 my, my, my kids don't do right when they Anyway, anyway. <laughs> Look at verse 37. Look at verse 37. Genesis 22, verse 7. But Isaac spoke. Now, y'all remember this now. The beginning of chapter 22. God says, Abraham. And Abraham says, what did he say, Michelle? And Amy. Yeah, we, we don't have time. I, I shouldn't even. I shouldn't even involve Sister Michelle because she won't want to get him up and just give us a teaching on him. We are gonna catch that because you need to hear it. You really need to hear it. He says, "Here I am. Here I am." I mean, and, and listen. Can I? Can I paraphrase? Here I am. That's Abraham saying to God, "I'm here for it." I don't even know what it is, but I'm here for it. You got a friend. You can call, yeah, and yeah. you don't even have to explain the whole of the situation. Right. Right. They will say, where you want me to be, when you want me to be there, right. I'm here for it. Right. We got some brothers around here like that. They're still working out their soul salvation <laughs> with fear to me. <laughs> Sean, raise your hands higher. Brother. Yeah, we got some folks, they're here for it. They don't even know what's about to jump off. They don't know what's happening, but they're here for it. Where you at? I'll roll up. I'll roll up right now. No, it ain't like that. Stay calm. Everybody breathe. We're going to be good. Y'all, y'all. Listen, and if you don't know anybody like that, it's because you're that person. I just want to clear up any ambiguity. Yeah. So God says to Abraham, listen, I want you to sacrifice your son. He said, take thine son, thine only son. Your only one. Your only one. And God, God is saying to Abraham, listen, Isaac is the one I promised you. Ishmael is the one you went and made yourself. Amen. Right. And now listen, don't, 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 don't be disparaging to this fail because God promised to bless him and did bless him. All right. And is still blessing him today. Yes, Y'all, come on now. I know we, we mad and we got problems now with what's going on over there in Israel, but you can't deny the hand of God. Amen. You cannot, right? And let me go further. You cannot curse what God has. further, but I could, okay? And so Abraham gets two young men, saddles up a donkey, gets everything together, and they head out on this journey. They, they travel for three days. They, they, for three days they walked. They walked for three days. It brings us to, to verse number seven. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, uh, his father, and said, my father, and he said, here am I. Isn't it interesting that Abraham answered his son the same way he answered God? <laughs> How you doing with your children? But anyway, that's another thing. Mm. 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 That's, that's, that's still resonating. Because mm. some of us given given more honor and respect to God than the people we live with. Something wrong with that. That's out of order. That's not divine order. It's not. Amen. It's not. Abraham pitched his tent. Then he went and worshipped. He built an altar. Amen. 
You okay? Yeah. Okay, anyway, anyway, we can circle back. If you need to circle back, we can circle back. It's a whole lot of Bible for that. Okay, a whole lot. Oh. Not just this one. Right? Here I am, my son. Then he said, look, the fire, the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And that's something that Isaac would ask that question. And Abraham said, my son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. All right. Abraham saw God as a provider before the provision. I contend the God you see is the God you'll get. If you see him as a provider, then provision will come. If you see him as a healer, then healing will come. If you see him as a deliverer, then deliverance will come. The God you see I, 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 can, I, can I go further? Yeah. Isaiah chapter number 6. We close it now. Okay, here we go. We get that. Get out. Here we go. Isaiah chapter 6. I have to stop here and we'll, we'll come back to the text. And, and I don't know. Whenever Pastor George says I can preach again, I'm going to come back to this. I don't know. They just boss me around. I do what I'm told. Here we go. Isaiah chapter 6. Are you ready? Are you there? Okay. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. First of all, you have to recognize the relationship that Uzziah and Isaiah were related. They were family. They were cousins. you got to be careful that you don't let the people and the things in your life obstruct your view of God. People in your world are so large until you can't see God, somebody got to go. There are adjustments that need to be made. Are you okay? In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne, high and lifted up. And the train of his robe filled the tomb. Y'all know the train, that's the hymn. In Hebrew, that means the hymn. And y'all know when the oil was poured on Aaron's hair and the iron beard, skirt of it, where did all the oil pool? In the hymn. In him, they, yes. they would fashion the garments. So it was it was literally this little this little cup that contained that no anointing gets wasted. On, you man. listen, yeah. a man's gift makes room for him. Yeah. Right? Listen, your gift will make room, not your anointing. Right. Right? What is your gift? My gift really is my assignment. When my assignment manifests. My assignment will make room for me, and my anointing will begin to flow at new levels. You don't have to throw elbows. You don't have to push. You don't have to shove at no point. Listen, we just here. It's just New Bethel, except for the visitors. And what I'm about to share, y'all don't care. I've been this out of here. Keep this right here. This is our stuff. Don't take it out of here. As how many people from all over the world are watching? Hi. Happy Resurrection Sunday. God bless you. We're glad that you've decided to join us. And we love you. Listen, at no point did Pastor Jay or Pastor Tab knock on the office door and come in and say, I think I should be the pastor of here. Right. At no point did that happen. At no point did it, if it ever were to happen. I'm still honey and bills, little boy. <laughs> My one grandson told the other grandson, it's all like Donkey Kong in here. Boy. <laughs> you don't have to make room for yourself. Your assignment, your appointment, and your anointing will take care of it all by yourself. You just be steady in the things of God, and God will make room for you. You okay? Okay, 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 okay. Okay, so above it, above it stood seraphim each with uh, each with with six wings. With two, he covered his face. With two, he covered his feet. With two, he flew. If I had six wings, I want to use all my wings to fly. <laughs> you see the difference in the mindset. You see the difference in the mindset. In the natural, look at me, I'm six winged. Are you two winged people? <laughs> It goes back to the quadriplegic, paraplegic mindset. Y'all ain't gonna say that. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah. Look at me, man, 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 man. Look at me. No, you ain't nothing to look at. None of us have anything to look at. It's by His grace. It's by His grace. That's all it is. His grace on your life. His hand. His touch on your life. His everything. Nothing you can do. Nothing. Nothing you can accomplish. Cover. Two wings to cover the face. Two wings to cover the feet. All you need is two wings to fly. And they covered up 
up in the presence of the Lord. Listen, we're closing. This is it. This is it. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The whole earth. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door were shaken by the voice of him who cried out. And the house was filled with smoke. I have been in services, and I'm not unique, I'm not special. Well, no, I'm special. Anyway, anyway, anyway. I have been in services where you could see the haze of the glory of the Lord. You ever experienced that? It's, it's, it's the manifest presence of God. Can I share something with you? There is God is omnipresent. What does that mean? He's everywhere. At the same time. He is everywhere at the same time. There's another, there's another word worth about a nickel that you could use, and you could you could you could introduce the word ubiquitous. The ubiquity of God, the ubiquitous nature of God, in that there is no place you can go and not encounter him. Are you okay? All right, just a little English, just a little, just a little. Yeah, yeah, but, but he is omnipresent. And then there's presence. And then there's manifest presence. Are you okay? Okay, can I, can I, listen to me. I'm closing. Remember manna, the manna that manna. fell, fed the children of Israel in the wilderness. And uh, the, manna, the manna was good for how long? One day, 24 hours. 24. The, the, the command was don't take none to store it up. And they did. And when they did, the next morning it was rotten. It was rotten, wasn't it? But wasn't God there? There was omnipresence. And still it went rotten. But remember in the Ark of the Covenant? What was in the Ark? Aaron's rod that budded. Right? The Aaron's rod, a stick. Not only did it bud, it sprouted, and there were almonds on it. So that rod went into the Ark of the Covenant. What else went into the Ark of the Covenant? It's tablets. The Word of God, right? Went into the Ark of the Covenant. You know what else went into? A jar of manna. What did the Ark represent? The manifest presence of God. Why would manna rot overnight in omnipresence? But last some 400 years in manifest presence. Oh my God. God's a keeper. Things that make you go. Are you okay? Yeah. Look, somebody told you, you need to get this presence. Yeah. Isaiah was in his presence. Yeah. Isaiah, was in, Isaiah was in his presence. And in the presence of, listen, in the presence of the Lord, you don't show up. What the presence of the Lord produces in you is a real sense of who you are and where you are. Isaiah said, woe is me for I am undone. Isaiah didn't say, I'm the one. Look at me. Listen to me. Watch me. Hear me. I'm getting it done in the presence of the Lord. No, Isaiah said, I don't even belong here. I don't I don't even belong here. He said, my lips are unclean, and I come from a people whose lips are unclean. And God said, I got a remedy for that. And the angel took coals, a coal that touched his lips, purified him. Then God asked the question, and the man, I just said, he volunteered. I wonder if there are any volunteers in the room. Tough to volunteer without a touch. Are you okay? You volunteer. God said, who, who can I send? Who will go? For, who will go? And I said, I'm experiencing manifest glory. You've touched me. You've purified me. You've sanctified me. You've called me. You've anointed me. You've appointed me. He didn't say all of that. I'm, I'm implying all of that. Uh -huh. But since you've done that, send me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you recognize the hand of God on your life, you've got to recognize it that, that it's there for more than just you to showcase you. Right. All right. Amen. It's not what it's for. No. Amen. 
See, that's really the difference. Oh, God, do I want to say Amen. Come on. Say it. Amen. Say it. Amen. It's really the difference in being anointed and having talent. Right. right. Amen. Amen. Because talent wants to showcase. Right. Anointing wants to see deliverance. Right. Difference. Yeah. Yeah. Isaiah, word of the Lord, prophesy again in, in the days gonna come when the anointing will destroy the yoke. The anointing will say, Look at me. Uh -oh. I'm the one. That's not. That's talent will do that. Right. Right. Isaiah saw him. How do you see him? How do you see him? Remember now the God you see. Amen. How do you see him? Pastor Jay, how do you see him? How do you see him? Dr. Barton, how do you see him? How do you see him? Isaiah said, I saw him and he was high and he was lifted up. And Jesus said, I, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men to me. How do you see him? You can't measure God by your go through. You measure God by your rescue. You measure God not based on what you're in. You measure him based on coming out. Do you understand? You don't measure God by your sickness. You measure God by your healing. Are you kidding this? You have got to see him high and lift it up. Because that's where he is. That's how he is. To see him any other way is to see him incorrectly. Amen. To see him any other way is to see him any To see him out of control. To see God wringing his hands and wondering what he's going to do now is incorrect. Amen. God's not fretting about anything you're fretting about. Amen. God's not worried about anything you're worried about. God is not concerned about anything you're concerned about because he already holds the answer. He already holds your future. He already knows. Shortly after King Saul was anointed king, first king of Israel, some folks that they were in league with got in trouble. And they were overcome by another nation. And they got out and sent word to Saul, we need some help. And in so many words, Saul sent word back and said, hang on, help is on the way. Oh. Your God who sits high. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. He is high and lifted up. Is saying to you this resurrection yes, morning, sir. no matter what you're in, no matter what you're going through, hang on, help. Thank you, Thank you. you can fret, you can be fearful, you can know all that you want to do, but God says, hang on, I'm coming to your rescue. And the truth of the matter is, is he's there with you now. Listen, what I'm saying, he's with me now. He's with me now.
Now you can't invite people to look at you and you're not worth looking at. I, I, I wanted to dress it up, but I just, I struggle for words, I'm sorry. You look at me and you a wreck. Look at me and you standing on your head. It don't work that way. But his power resident in us. The glory of the Lord resting upon us. Do you, do you even realize that where you go, you're his representative? When you go to a place, you are not praying, Lord, send your glory. You are the glory. Well, Pastor, that's a stretch. No, it's not. No. No. He's resident in you. Yeah. <coughs> His power, the glory of God. And as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. The sons of God. I'm like my elder brother. That's, that's, that's hard for us to wrap our mind around. And yet it's what the word says. That's what the word says. Now, will you walk? Now, not even, I don't say in your new identity. Will you walk in your true identity? Amen. Amen. Great word. All right. Yeah. Will you walk in your, in your true identity? Let me turn my machine off so y'all think I'll quit. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. Peter said, look on us. Look on us. And the, and the Bible says, the Bible says that the lame man, he looked on him. All right. He, he, he looked, he looked like he knew he was going to get something. Uh -huh. yeah. He just didn't get what he thought he was going to get. Right. Right. He got something better. Uh -huh. And Jesus is saying, <laughs> if you look this way, I'm going to give you what you need. Right. See, Amen. You have a want. But he says, I'm going to give you what you need. See, all he, was, he was a beggar. That's what he did. That's all he could do. He couldn't work. And so, listen, if, you, if you're looking for benevolent people, this is a church. Park me in the front by the door. You would think it's benevolent people who go to church. If somebody would give me something. It was strategic on his part. Right. It was the hour of prayer. People were coming to pray. Oh, you religious? Let me see. Right. Y'all don't miss this. Let me see how religious you are. Let me see if you love Jesus like you say you do. But he got more than he bargained for. And the Bible says that after the healing, he went on. We read it in the text. He hung on. Yeah, all right. he, he hung on to them. And then later it says he was walking, leaping, and something else on his way. In. And I said, now that's how you go to church. That's how you go to church. So he wasn't late. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you go to when you've been delivered, when you sure enough have gotten your healing. Right. You go. When you go from being being carried around to now being able to walk around, right. you won't tire.
St. Joseph's Hospital and I was laying on a steel table and they had pumped me with dye and I'm watching the dye go through my system and, and you know, this is this, this whole leukemia thing and you know, Mama Lo, y'all yeah. know, Mama Lo, remember that song we sang, Something God, yeah, yeah that's all, that's all. <laughs> so I'm laying there on this table and I'm in nuclear medicine. Right. What in the world? They doing nuclear medicine. I'm there, and, I'm, and it just it develops. Like, you don't even belong here. I, know I don't know where that came from, yeah. but I'm so glad. I said, I don't belong here. And, and, the, and, and the people kept trying to tell me what I had. And everything, they said, and this is the symptom. And then I go home, they said, and your hands will swell up. I went home. No swelling. No, my mom, the first time, my hands were swollen. And I said, what the what? I, I can't ask you in the parking lot. <laughs> and they said, your joints don't ache. Y'all, listen, I'm, I'm like in my, my late 30s, early 40s. That was, that was, that was just a couple weeks ago. And... <laughs> My hips was hurting, my knees were hurting, all my joints were aching. And they say, you, you know, you'll, you'll feel your joints and it'll feel inflamed, it'll feel hot. Everything they said, I felt. Can I tell you something? You can't listen to everybody. Now I had to turn the doctors off and get back into the Word of God. He was wounded for my transgression. Bruised for my iniquity. Chastisement of my peace was upon him. By his stripes on me. I had to get back to the word that declared there is no healing medicine. But I am the Lord thy God that healeth you. I had to get back to the word that said there is a ball in Gilead. He still heals today. Somebody get back to the word, get back to the word, get back to the word. And I start moving around on the table and the nerve. Listen, when, when they put stuff in you and then they go in the other room so they can't get nothing on them. That's exactly what I'm so glad. Y'all watch them. When they, they hook you up and put something in you and then they run. from round away where she couldn't get none on her. She said, you got to be still. I said, oh no, I'm getting ready to leave. She said, don't pull the needle out. I, I just pulled it on out. I ain't afraid to bleed. I just pulled it on out. And she said, well, the, the procedure done. She said, now we got to start over. I said, with somebody else. Because I'm done with this. And, and now listen, listen, years and years and years. Last summer, it came up again. Last, those are last summer, last fall. It came up again. And I'm going through it. Oh, no, we got to get blood tests. Then they send you to a, what's the blood guy? Hematologist. Then they send you to the, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was going to see all them people. Jay, Pastor Jay, I'm sorry. Out every, once a week at the same time of the day, every, it, it just wants And they get getting blood, getting blood. Getting blood. I felt myself getting smaller. <laughs> you need to lose weight, go get blood. I just felt myself getting smaller. I had to go on a cruise after that so I could fatten up. It was unbelievable. And they, they're doing it all over again. And my, and my hematologist, he said, well, it could be this, and it could be that. And then he said, or it could be nothing. I said, it's nothing. I said, it's nothing. And he said, well, you know, let's, um, we're going to hope for the best. But we said, I, 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 I know who I am. <clears throat> you hope. I believe. I believe. Right? Listen, the proof that God will keep his word is that he raised Jesus from the 
dead. dead. If he could say he was going to do it and do it, any and everything he promises to you is less than that. Are you okay? So now, if you're here and you're believing God for a promise, you're waiting on a promise, jump to your feet. Hurry up, hurry up. We got to go. Okay. Now, let me tell you, you have proof that God will do this thing. What's your proof? Resurrection morning. That's your proof. That's your proof. If God said I'm going to do it, look at somebody and say it's done. No, look at him and say it's done, done. Yeah. yeah it's done, done. No, that's ebonically horrible. I mean, we just, oh Lord, we're just butchering the, the English language. But it's done. It's done in Jesus' name. Yeah, now what you have to do is hold fast the confession of your faith. You all right? Don't don't let what you see, feel, hear, smell, or touch deter you from the promise of God. Right? Don't let your your earthly senses Amen. fight against your faith. Amen. Do you understand? Amen. If anything is lying, it's those those five senses. Amen. That's why Paul said to us, "We walk by faith and not by sight." Sometimes you just gotta close your eyes and believe God. Amen. Are you here? Amen. You just gotta close your eyes and believe God. Now, Father, in Jesus' name. We gather to say we believe you. We know you as a promise keeper. We know that you're not a man that you should lie, neither the son of man that you should repent. You spoke it, you'll make it good, you said it, you'll do it, you will perform it, and we stand on your word, the unmovable, immutable word of God. You said that before one jot or tittle of your word has all of heaven and earth will pass. Before your word fails. And so now we stand squarely upon your promise to us. Amen. That you are our deliverer. You are our way maker. You are the savior, sanctifier. You are the author and finisher of our faith. Amen. We trust in you. This moment. We give ourselves wholly to you. And we say have your way. Thank you for this resurrection day. Thank you for your blood. Still powerful. Still working. Still effective. And now in this moment, we cast every care upon you. We know you care for us. This is your moment. You can cast or you can carry. It's up to you. You can cast or you can carry. It is up to you. If you cast it to him, leave it there. If you choose to carry, don't complain. It's what you chose. But I hear God saying, give it to me, I'll bear it. If there's a need in your life, I will take it if you only give it to me. Father, we willingly give you. We give them to you. And we do it with grateful hearts and thankful hearts. We do it in full recognition that there is nothing too hard for you. Lord Jesus, we bless you. You are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. King in my life, Lord over my life. Pray that you would continue to have your way in this, your people. Now, Father, as we depart this place, we depart in full knowledge of your omnipresence. But, Lord, we long for manifest presence. 
that keeping power, that preserving power, that power that you you have that will make us outlast whatever it is we're going through. Sometimes, Lord, we just you just call us to outlast the devil. Amen. And so strengthen us, give us stamina, give us wisdom, give us discernment now to outlast the enemy. Thank you that he is a defeated foe. And we know right where he is under our feet. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for this, your people. Bless us now as we leave this place, not your presence. This is what we ask, and we ask it in the strong and mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, if you agree with the prayer, I want you to put your hands together and put a clap on.